what's your saving rate? What should your saving rate be? And what is a saving rate anyway? And how do you work it out? Let's talk about that. It's very easy to work out what your saving rate is. You have to take your income and then you take the money that you spend each month and you calculate the difference. So the difference is your saving rate, the money that you're not spending each month. If you were earning 250,000 yen a month and you were spending a total of 230,000 yen a month on you know, rent and food and entertainment and paying debts and so on, you would have 20,000 yen left. And that 20,000 yen would be your savings. As a percentage, 20,000 yen of a 250,000 yen income would be about 8%. So your saving rate in this case would be 8%. Now the money that you don't spend each month can either go into savings or you can invest it. And generally what people do is that they build up an emergency fund first. So an emergency fund is money that will help you out if you have an emergency and you need cash quickly. And once the emergency fund is full, then they'd start putting that money into investments. And investments in Japan, you'd normally want to put in a NISA account or maybe in an Ideco account, depending on your situation. We've got videos about all of these things on the channel. Emergency funds and Ideco accounts and NISA accounts. But how much should you be saving? Well, it kind of depends on your situation, right? Personal finance is very personal and we have to find something that works for us. Let's look at a few different savings rates and the consequences that might come from those rates. So the first one is a negative saving rate. This is where you're spending more money than you earn. Most of the time this will end badly. You're basically going into debt in order to keep spending money. And that means that either your income is really low and, and in fact too low to live on, or your discretionary spending, so you're spending on things that you don't necessarily need but you like or enjoy, is too high. If you have a negative spending rate, that is quite a big problem that you need to sort out quite quickly, either by increasing your income or by decreasing your expenses or decreasing your discretionary spending. I can think of maybe three situations where it might be okay to have a negative savings rate, but even so, it's not a good habit to get into and it's probably better to try and figure out your finances so that you're not spending more money than you make. The three situations where it might be okay is say you're a student and you have very low income but you've got a high paid job coming up, you're going to be making a lot more money quite soon. In that situation it might be okay to spend a bit more than you have currently because you'll soon have that higher income to make up for it. Another one might be if you're expecting an inheritance or some kind of windfall. Uh, and so you can ramp up your spending now because you know that in the future you'll have that large amount of money coming in. And of course this is dangerous because maybe you won't get the inheritance or maybe the windfall doesn't work out and then you're in quite a bit of trouble. And the third situation is if you are retired and you're drawing down on your investments, you're spending your investments in retirement, you don't have any income but you have a lot of money saved up uh, and invested and you're going to live off that. And in that case having a negative saving rate is fine, that's actually part of the plan. Next stage would be to have a zero, a zero percent savings rate so you're earning as much as you're spending. This is okay for now but in the future you're going to run into problems and if you have any kind of emergency you're probably going to have a bad time. Next would be about a 10% savings rate. Now for me this would be the bare minimum. You want to be saving at least 10% each month of your income and a 10% savings rate means that you'll probably have a little bit of a buffer for emergencies. You'll probably be able to retire in a reasonable way and kind of live a basic life in retirement and if you are only saving and investing 10% you didn't have any kind of pension uh, in the future, it would take you about 50 years to be able to retire. So for most people that would be, you know, start working at 20 odd, you'd have to work until 70 odd in order to do that. So not the end of the world, but most people can probably do a bit better. Now, 20% savings rate, this would give you about 37 years to retirement, assuming no kind of pensions and so on. But in Japan, assuming you're gonna get nankin, a 20% saving and investing rate would give you a fairly comfortable 
retirement. And it would also mean that you'd have the money to deal with emergencies or life changes that came up. 20% is a pretty good goal to aim for, at least to begin with. Now, 30% is getting a little bit interesting. With a 30% savings rate, you can probably retire after about 28 years, which for most people would give them kind of around age 50 as their early retirement date. This is pretty good. Also, with a 30% savings rate, you're going to have plenty of resources to deal with setbacks, emergencies, and problems. And you're going to have quite a bit of slack month on month in terms of extra money that you could access if you needed to. With a 30% savings rate, you're going to have a very comfortable retirement. And for most people, 30% is going to be tough, but not impossible to achieve. Going above 30%, now we're getting into kind of eccentric territory. Either your income is extremely high and you're quite disciplined at keeping your spending rain down, or you're really into personal finance and you have some kind of goal that you're trying to achieve. With a 40% savings rate, you have about 22 years to retirement. With a 50% savings rate, you have about 17 years to retirement. And with a 60% savings rate, you have 12 and a half years to retirement. And this is what my wife and I found. So it took us about 15 years from when we started getting into personal finance until we reached our fire number. And our savings rates along the way were probably around 50 or 60% the whole time. Now, if you're just starting out and your savings rate is not what you might want it to be, don't panic, don't despair. This can probably seem very discouraging, but it doesn't have to be. I find the best way to make changes to your finances is slowly and gradually. So if you want to start saving, start saving a really small amount of money, you know, 3,000 yen a month, 5,000 yen a month, and over time, increase that amount. As you get more used to it, you get some momentum going, you get motivated and you start looking for places where you could maybe spend less, maybe earn a little bit more, put that into your savings, put that into your investments. And be kind to yourself. So this savings goal that you might have set for yourself is not the be all and end all of everything. So if you find it difficult to reach that goal, if you find it difficult to maintain that goal with inflation at the moment, so the cost of living is going up, salaries are not keeping pace with that, so you might find that you're not able to save as much as you could before, that's okay. You can reduce the amount you save a little bit, spend a little bit more, and that's okay. You'll still reach your goals eventually, and there's no need to beat yourself up if the situation has changed. Personal finance is a journey, and it's gonna go up and down, and things will change, and as the situation changes, it's good for us to change our plan, and change how we deal with things. As long as you're saving something, you're investing something, you're going to end up slightly better off than you were yesterday. So how about you? What is your savings rate at the moment? In retirement, my income has gone down a lot, so my savings rate is currently probably around zero, possibly negative some months, slightly positive some months, but roughly around the maintenance stage. We've done polls on the Retire Japan forum before where it seemed that most people posting there were, had a savings rate of around 30%. I'd be interested to see how our YouTube audience compares. Please leave us a comment below with your savings rate, and if you have any questions, please stick them in there as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.